Okay, guys, welcome back to Cross the Cranks. All right, we're gonna do some jigs here. I got a bunch to make, so figured I'd show you what I'm using. And uh, we're using the Ultra Minnow Jig. And um, these are the small sizes. It's SHR5A. SHR5A. And you can get it at Barlow's. Or do it molds. Um, I've already heated it up. Got the got the uh, heat going. Got the lead pot going, and I'm only going to make the three eighths and half inch, and some five eight sizes. So let's make a three eighths. I'm not going to do three at a time. It always seems to not work out right when you do it that way. It's just a waste. Got my. Lead pot over here, dripping away. Right. Like I said, I probably won't show you doing a bunch of them because. I really want to get to painting them to show you guys how I've been painting these a little bit. And yeah, we're going to airbrush it. Because sometimes you might not have all the colors in powder paints. But you can't airbrush them. And since I'm putting eyes on them anyway, I'm going to use airbrush paint. And then that way I can epoxy them. And we'll go. I'll show you the whole step, the whole process. I'm using uh, size two aught, three aught, and four aught. Um, Eagle Claw five seventies. They seem to work really good. I'm just gonna keep. Popping a few here for you. I mean, you guys have seen me do the spinner baits, and I actually use this mold for a spinner bait too. Got it modified so I can run a spinner bait line in there. But I'm going to do a bunch of these, and then I will bring you back, and we will get to painting them and I'll show you some of the ideas I came up with with painting them so let me pour a bunch of these and I'll bring you back All right, let's get to painting some. I got a bunch of them primed up. I got a bunch of whites primed up and I got a bunch of blacks, different sizes. So I'm not gonna show you painting all of them, but I am gonna make a lot of color changes. So bear with me. I'll have to clean the brush a few, quite a few times, but um, really I just kind of want to give you some variations of some things that I've done and they look pretty cool. And they kind of going to match some of my tails that I, uh, some of my skirts that I already have. Um, and you can get all these skirts. I'll show you at the end all my finished pieces. We'll kind of go through some of them. But everything 
all the skirts are available either on Amazon. I'll put a link down at the bottom, either on Amazon or Barlow's Tackle. So um, that's where I get pretty much all my really cool skirts come from Barlow's. They got a bunch of mixed mixed styles. Um, so I'll put links to to Barlow's and and the Amazon ones that I use down in the description so you can find them. And uh, I appreciate it. Um, so let me uh, show you what we're doing first. First, I'm going to go through and put some golden iridescent pearl on them. Let me get that over here in the camera. Golden iridescent pearl. Um, this looks really cool. And like I said, um, I've powder painted a bunch of baits. Um, so let me grab a couple here while I'm doing it. I've powder punched, powder painted a bunch of baits. And uh, I really like the painted ones because, like I said, I'm going to end up putting uh, eyes on them anyway. And, yeah, the eyes have adhesive on them, and you can put super glue on them or Loctite or whatever. But um, I really like to make these look dynamite. So even though they're only a buck, buck fifty with the skirts and everything, you know, usually when I sell them, um, or sell them in a couple in a pack, you know. I still like to give people quality looking. So even when, you know, people say, man, I was catching the shit out of your, off of your jig, you know, that makes me feel good. And I'm glad people are catching fish off my baits, you know. That's really one of the main reasons I do it, is just so people have a, have a good bait to fish with and just shows people what your quality's like when you do a good job on it. So, you know, yeah, I probably spend a little more time on them than they're worth, but, you know, I like selling them and I like using them myself too. So if I want to use one, I want to make sure it looks good and works good. Um, so, yeah, and, and really you'll see when I finish them, the airbrush ones just look so much better than the powder paint because you can do so much more with so many different colors of paint you already have, you know? So, um, let me finish the rest of these iridescents on here and um, I'll bring you back and we'll put a color in it. Okay, let's start off with a little shad pattern on this pearly white here put a couple drops of pearl black all right so all I'm gonna do is just come down the back a little bit get that black on the back little bit come down just this little bit on the sides and I'm gonna hit that around the eye a little water in there or something where a little splatter of water come out. Darken around the eyes.
do a let's do another little one. Okay, and we'll only leave black in there because I'll probably use black on a couple other ones too. But um, let me dry these real quick. Turn it down just a little bit there. And then we're going to take our little tool here, this little guy, and we're going to dab a little bit out of the cap. And we're going to put a little shad dot right there. Okay, I'm gonna hang this one up to dry. Get the other side of this one. And we'll be ready for some eyes on that one. All right. I think next color, we're going to try a color shift on a black. So let's go with um, let's go with this dark green ten. Because um, I got some that are kind of like a pumpkin seed skirt, and they got pumpkin seed and browns in them. So let's put some of this on. Cause this is kind of a Almost a metallic green pumpkin. Spray, make sure I got all my water out of there this time. You're really not going to see the real benefits of this until I get the epoxy on it and get the skirts on it. That's when it all comes together. But pretty much I just wanted to show you some of the things you can do with your, with your jig heads. Instead of all using all powder paints. That's going to be a nice green pumpkin right there. I'm going to do a few of them. And I'll clean this out. And here, so we'll get a closer look at it. Clean this out, and I'll bring you back and we'll do another color. 
Okay, before I clean that out, I wanted to show you what this one looks like on white. Same color shift. Instead of black, we're going to go on this white, pearl white. And this makes a really nice little bait fish color. Nice little, nice little green. All right, I'm gonna clean this out and I'll bring you back. Okay, let's see if we can get uh, a little bit of a crawl pattern going on here. Let's start off with them um, with a little bit of sand. We're just going to kind of cover most of it with sand. Oh, it's got something wrong with it. Didn't pour right. It's not I noticed that. I will go ahead and paint it. I'll use it. I'll throw it in my box. Be a good little test piece anyway. Let's hit another one. All right, I'll we'll do a few of these and then we'll put some brown on it. Okay, let's do a little burnt, a little burnt umber. Over the sand. Trying to hold it so you guys could see. It's a little harder with these little guys. Try another one. I 
That's gonna look good. I got a brown and red skirt. This will go good on. Okay, let's take that burn number and let's put it on the belly of this one. Let's do another one with the burn number on the top again. All right, let's clean this out. And then well, we're going to put some red on these because I got some red and brown. Got some red and brown skirts. Let me get this a little darker. All right, I'm going to clean that out and I'll be right back. Okay, let's take this red pearl. We got some red pearl in there. Where we at? Got some red pearl. Another one. That one should look really cool. Now put just a little bit of red on the tip of this one. Another one here. And we're gonna leave that one like that. All right, let's clean this out and get on to some other color. 
Okay, let's uh, do a few more color shifts here because I got a blue and a black skirt and I want to use that. And you know I'm going to go with the uh, electric blue intense violet. So let's do the tops of these. And we'll do one all blue. Got a little thick on there. We'll let that dry. That was the little one I had laying in there. I was like, oh, I didn't paint that one. These really pop when you get the epoxy on them. All right, let's clean that and let's try a couple more of these on these other ones I got left over. I want to do one bluegill pattern and some chartreuse, and we'll get the eyes and the we'll get the eyes and the epoxy on them, tails, all that good stuff. Green, gold, cold blue. Okay, let's do a bluegill pattern. See what we can come up with here. Let's go with the. Uh, let's go with. Let's go with this Comart yellow. Hansa yellow. This stuff sprays really thin. And it's got kind of a chartreuse look to it. A yellow chartreuse. So let's see what we can do. I have three of them here I want to try. That didn't take long, did it? Let's get all three of these real quick. Okay, 
clean this out. Okay, I think next we're going with the detail moss green. Dark on the back, fade down to the yellow. A little dark around the eyes. and do all three of these. Clean these out, and we'll, we'll come back and put the other two colors on. Okay, next we're going to put a little orange, a little orange on this guy. Transparent orange. Actually, it's, yeah, transparent orange. Right on the right on the tip of the nose, under the chin. Now they actually turned a little brown. Here's some I here's a couple I did with uh, detail moss green and we'll put orange on the belly of these.
All right. Okay, last thing we're going to do is put some put some blue spots on these guys. Alright, I'm going to knock all these out, then I'm going to get all the eyes on it. I'll show you guys a little bit of how I do the epoxy, and we'll wrap this up. So I got 30 in there, uh, my booth. This is the booth I built. I don't know, I might have showed you guys this before. I can't remember if it was in another video or not. But, um... I got 30 jig heads on there, and I got about uh, about 12 more to do. So they're all coated. They got eyes on them and everything. And then I just close the door. Actually, I'll show you the light. Got some little UV lights in there. They work great, really. I'm about I leave them in there usually about an hour. Probably they're dry in 30 minutes with the UV that I use. You know, I got you guys know I use Solar Res, and it in that little little booth I got it dries in like three minutes. But in here it's it's set in three five minutes, but they're still a little tacky. So I usually leave them in for about an hour, and that way I know they're good and dry, good and hardened. Yeah, I usually just leave them hang out for a little while before I start trying to touch them because as most of UVs are, then you know, they usually need 24 to 48 hours to cure good and solid without fingerprinting up. So, yeah, before I put the tails on them and stuff, it'll probably be about 24 hours before I even touch them. But I've left them in there longer. I've left them in there, forgot about them, it's lures and stuff sometimes, and let them run for a couple of hours, but it still didn't make no difference. Once you get them out, they're still kind of tacky. So you just have to let them air cure the rest of the way for, you know, like I said, usually 24 hours is good with these jig heads. Most baits, I, I usually let them go for 24, 48 hours. Just depends on what I'm doing. If I'm making a video, I usually, that's why I don't usually see at the end of my videos, I usually don't have hooks on them. Because I just set them up to where I can finish the video. But I usually let them set for 24, 48 hours before I actually put the hooks and split rings on them and stuff. So, all right. I'm going to close this dude up and I'll bring you back. And we'll look at all the finished pieces with the tails on them. Okay, guys. Here's the finished pieces. Finished jig heads. All right. Let's check out a few of them. Here's one of the brown ones. With the red and brown on it. Um... Here's a yellow chartreuse. Let's see, here's a fluorescent yellow. Let's see, here's a purple and white. Actually, this is violet and white. See, here's one of the shads. And 
here's one of the color shifts with the blue with black and blue that one turned out really cool let's see here's one of the pumpkin seeds Oop. see the little dots on there so yeah maybe you don't have a bunch of powder paints and stuff you can still paint your jig heads just using your airbrush paint here's one of the shads still gotta put some tails on it ran out of whites and chartreuse so I still got some get some more done here there's one with the little uh, green tint color shift on it on, that was on just a white um, here's one of the shads with a blue and black tail so yeah I think they all turned out pretty good I'm happy with them I know they'll sell but um yeah sorry this video was, video was a little long but I wanted to get through at least a few options for you to show you how to paint your own jig heads and um, appreciate everybody welcome to all the new subscribers on the channel appreciate everybody that's been subscribing um, if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe hit that notification bell so you get notified when we put up a video and uh, always remember stay crusty my friends